a small town in far north Queensland, Australia, would become the first reports of the UFO crop circles phenomena that would end up going worldwide. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel if you don't know what is going on here. I'm a horror artist and I like to draw what I talk about in the videos. I tend to draw what comes to mind when I am researching a story and sometimes it can be an inspiration by the story or it is the complete story that I like to draw in my own way. And all the information in today's video came from the deep parts of the internet far and wide as well as being broadcast on a TV show aired here in Australia called Close Encounters Down Under. So the story begins one morning at 9am on the 19th of January 1966, a banana farmer from Yurimo near Tully in far north Queensland, Australia, named George Pedley, who was 28 at the time, was out driving his tractor past a lagoon that was located on his neighbour's property called Horseshoe Lagoon, when he all of a sudden heard a hissing sound that was so loud that it could be heard over the tractor's engine. George stopped his tractor and got off of it thinking that he had blown a tyre. George didn't even get a chance to check anything because what he saw next was a UFO rising from the lagoon about 60 feet, tilting and then took off and vanished in blue vapour. George had to go and investigate. George said he was only there three hours earlier and did not see anything. He found a roughly 9 metre in diameter circle on the lagoon from the lagoon's reeds interweaved meticulously and fused possibly from the heat of the craft and the reeds were also swirled in a clockwise direction. The reeds were also brown on top where the craft would have touched and the underside was still green. There was also indents in the bottom of the swamp possibly from landing gear. Investigators such as the RAAF, the Royal Australian Air Force and meteorologists tried to debunk it with suggesting that it was a whirlwind or a willy willy as they called it, which is just bullshit because that wouldn't have left a perfect circle, that would have left a path of destruction. Once all the theories were exhausted, the story went international, spreading across the world to the US, England and Japan and was labelled the Tully Saucer Nest. People started coming out of the woodwork with other theories such as helicopters, birds, crocodiles, dogs and reed grubs that caused the crop circles. George described the UFO as blue-grey in colour, about 25 feet across and 9 feet wide and convexed on top and bottom. Later that day, around noon, George went to his next-door neighbour, Albert Panissi, which is the neighbour of the property who he was on at the time, who investigated the reeds further and he was the one that found that the reeds were uprooted and somehow intertwined in a floating reed pontoon. Unfortunately, Albert had a lot of people trespass on his property to have an up-close and personal look at the location of the first ever recorded crop circle for months to years afterwards. Then other crop circles in Tully started appearing, which then labelled Tully the UFO capital of Australia at the time. The five other crop circles found was small in size and some went clockwise and one went anti-clockwise. And another local farmer named Lou Lardy found two on his property with scorched centres and seemed to be older than Albert's. Now the problem was that in 1991, crop circle pranksters Doug Bauer and David Chorley laid claim to most if not all, the crop circles in England for the past 10 years, plus stating that it was easy and they had the tools to do it. A wooden plank fixed with a rope and wire to keep everything clean and even. Stories like the Tully saucer nest were not taken seriously and people started thinking that it too was faked, but both Doug and David denied going to Australia to make them, but these guys just wanted to show the world that it was easy to do and even easier to convince specialists in the field of investigating crop circles that they were quote unquote real. Tully was their inspiration for doing these hoax. 
Unfortunately, both George and Albert have passed on now, but they were both very active in doing interviews and conferences before they died and were both very adamant that what George saw that day was a UFO and not a hoax. In 1966 here in Australia was a big year for UFO sightings and activity. From here, the Tully UFO phenomena continued for many years on Horseshoe Lagoon and special key dates were in 1969, 1972 and 1975 that these were happening. By 1990, Albert said he had 22 saucer nests on his property since the 1966 incident, but some of the later finds were possible hoaxes from people trespassing. Tully has been known as one of the places with the highest rainfall in Australia. George had seen the UFO in the wet season. There is theories that where there is large bodies or amounts of water, there is high amounts of UFO activity. I also lent this theory on The Missing 411, the UFO Connection documentary, which is on Amazon Prime if you are interested in watching it. Now here is another interesting fact about the Tully saucer nest. George and Albert were both skeptics about UFOs before the incident, but Albert told George that he had been having weird dreams a week before the UFO crop circle happened. Albert dreamt every night for a week that a UFO would land on his property. He also said that on the Wednesday around 5.30am, Albert's dog suddenly went mad with howling and ran off in the direction of the lagoon. Albert told the Sun newspaper on the 24th of January 1966 that the nightly dreams were starting to worry him because he couldn't understand them as it was the same dream every time, same events playing out, and he felt fear in his dreams when the UFO would land and didn't feel relieved until it took off. So what do you think about this particular case? Have you heard of it? If you're an overseas person, have you heard about this case over in the country that you're in? Like, what do you think? I personally think if I was to rein in, I fully believe um, these guys because, you know, it was 1966, these guys were farmers and, um, you know, to see something like that would have been pretty shocking and to create, you know, that particular, um, you know, crop circle in the way that it did. I personally think that, yeah, it was definitely a UFO that landed there. That's my personal opinion. Um, definitely tell me your uh, opinion on this case. Uh, yeah, it was, for some reason, uh, it wasn't, I don't think this case was overly uh, investigated either, just like many of them were just, you know, push us, pushed aside and treated as just, you know, people have come onto the property and decided to do pranks or hoax or, or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I, I personally think that what George saw that day on his neighbor's property, on Albert's property, um, when he was driving his tractor through there, I, I believe him. I, I honestly believe what he saw was a UFO. Now, the illustration that I decided to do for this story today, um, I don't know, this one sort of stumped me a little bit, believe it or not. I couldn't really come up with something that I was truly happy with, uh, with depicting this particular story. Um, but the, probably the thing that sort of um, I ended up coming up with was an alien, uh, a giant alien being on a farmer's property. And you can see a little scarecrow in the background. There's some UFOs flying around this particular, um, you know, big alien just to make sure that he carries out what he's, uh, you know, there to do. And there's also a UFO uh, that's deciding to uh, abduct a cow because uh, why not? <laughs> and this particular um, alien that's got this it's, he's got this big um, hammer in his hand and you'll see, and, and this was really tricky to do because I couldn't sort of invert my brain to sort of work out how this pattern would stamp 
on on the grounds so I just tried my best so yeah it's basically a hammer that is he's creating crop circles with so um, this was just um, something that I came up with just thinking that this aliens just going around stamping crop circles on properties and making it look um, you know like say a UFO's done it you know that that's just the direction I was going in um, just just an inspiration from the story but um, yeah sort of hoaxing um, this this alien is hoaxing alien uh, crop circles so yeah with a with a device that just stamps it on there and um, that's basically that's basically all it is so yeah I did this illustration on some of the cheapest shit paper that I have um, because uh, this paper's cheap and nasty and it cost me five dollars for an A3 size piece at a shop here called Aldi and uh, you know if, if you're in the UK I'm pretty sure the UK um, they've got Aldi there so you kind of know what the special buyers are to get this paper what I love about this cheap paper is the fact that it's got an unreal texture and you can see the texture in the shading of the illustration and um, like it's it's shit to work with with watercolor but doing all the textured stuff in the shading I love it for that because it's just got this hatch type um, pattern and you'll see like if you watch the illustration through to the end you will see what I'm talking about I love it for that like it's just yeah I like it I just I just like it that's all I can really say but yeah um this one has elements in it that i'm not a fan of um i'm still trying to get back on track with drawing better and um yeah coming up with better ideas and yeah the main focus obviously there's a lot, lot a lot there's not a lot of detail in the background um other than the focus is on the alien so the big alien that's going around uh, hoaxing crop circles or stamping crop, crop circles into um, you know farmers fields anyway that is it from me if you like this kind of content like and subscribe dislike it don't care it all helps me um, get up into the algorithm or the algorithm to pick me up and uh, throw me out there to all the people that want to see my content and I will see you guys in the next one bye <laughs>